The National Museum of the American Indian acquired a headdress in 1910, which is now on display in Washington, D.C., and an unlikely accumulation of knowledge can be sourced from the traditional stories and the history of such artefacts. The truth is found in the oral traditions, once classed as dreamt-up fantasy. A fantasy, however, that once played out in the sky over the world we call home. Wait till you hear this. Ancient astronaut theorists are correct in their assumptions regarding extraterrestrial visitors to the Earth. Something did appear to these people all over the world, but the presence is in the sky, radiating intense displays and therefore influencing ancient peoples into a cultural and religious jump-starting. It literally affects everything, yet we have forgotten everything about it in favour of faith and the return of the supreme being echoed all over the world is the yearning for a return to the golden age. The beings are not physically conscious like us, we only conceive them to be because we are. In the Mythology of the World Axis by Myrinus Anthony van der Slaus, the author explores the idea that in stark contrast to the modern world, traditional societies always used to derive their fashion standards from mythological or religious sources. Looking backward rather than ahead for inspiration, according to the author, and the researchers from the National Museum of the American Indian explain that the headdress known as the Aka Paris reflects the Kayapo view of the universe. And in this view, it's a cosmogram representative of the sky, which is inserted in a beeswax hat known as a kutop that signifies the physical world. The wooden stick running vertically through the opening is interpreted as the rope that Kayapo descended to reach this earth. In the latter, anthropologists readily recognise an expression of the Axis Mundi, a vertical connector between the spiritual realms above and the human world here on earth below. And none of this would raise any eyebrows nor make any headlines were it not for the awkward fact that the world or the sky looks nothing like the Kayapo outfit. If the heavens are circular, no vertical rope is seen to dangle down from the centre. Neither the central red feather on top, nor the two orange feathers flanking the bottom strike one as familiar. Should the starburst pattern remind some of the rays of the sun, the sparse information culled from the Kayapo is already violated, for an image of the sun cannot at the same time represent the cosmos where it is a conceptual link between the sun and an ancestral rope from heaven cannot be assumed without firmer evidence. Perhaps the headrest shows the earth immersed in a sea of plasma, distributed across its ionosphere, its magnetosphere and the solar wind. And while this may be over the heads of most people, an understanding of this plasma environment offers an unexpected and quite adventurous solution to the mystery of the Kayapo crown. The familiar curtains formed by the Earth's aurora are the result of the so-called diocotron instabilities, in which a hollow sheaf of plasma breaks up into a cylindrical ring of discrete filaments, and these typically number from 56 at first and subsequently merge in pairs or groups of three as they revolve. Plasma physicist Anthony Peratt proposed that one or more extreme solar storms transpiring in the early Holocene temporarily transformed the Earth's plasma environment into a single, collimated plasma tube displaying a bewildering array of instabilities that included the diocotron type. Consequently, a structure very much like the Kayapo crown may have been visible in the sky at those times. Structural analogues to this formation can be found in medicine wheels and stone circles, mandalas, maple style dances and various other aspects of traditional sacred culture at this time. But what do you guys think about Anthony Pratt's groundbreaking ideas regarding the ancient histories all around the world? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.